This is Pocket, Episode 7, Refrigerator. That would be so awesome. On Wednesday, July 15, 2015, and now with Skype problems. And we don't even use Skype. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk7. Hello, this is Ryan. I just wanted to apologize for the horrible audio quality that you will experience in this episode. It turns out that CenturyLink had a huge outage during the recording of this show, uh, and later the night, the network completely went down for various parts of the metro area here in Minnesota in St. Paul and Minneapolis. And also, it turns out that Comcast also had a pretty large outage, and that problem still was persisting hours later. And so, we kind of had some issues. Uh, hopefully, you can still listen to what you can, and if you can't, don't feel too bad about it. Uh, hopefully, CenturyLink and Comcast will resolve their network issues, and we won't have this issue ever again. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope you have a good one. Woo, woo, lucky number seven. That's this right yeah, now. Here, here, here. How's it going? Let's get one of those. It's going, going well. Going well. Glad we got uh, got got all that. Uh, well, if if you want to hear us talk about some awesome uh, um, stuff, Skype problem sorting out, among other things, you should check uh, you should check out the uh, fringe for this week, which is on the interwebs at a URL. It's not. It's, it's not predetermined. Out. You'll have to find out later. Yeah, you'll you'll all of figure that out first. But if you go yeah. looking for it, you'll find it. What was that, Ready? Brian? You said Skype, but you know we're not using Skype. Oh. Already. But if but if it's a if it's a video conferencing problem though, then it then it automatically becomes a Skype problem. That is pretty much true because you know it's a Kleenex, right? Uh, that's exactly. Point. Clear, exactly. You know, screwed. you know, you're not FaceTiming anybody. You're Skyping someone. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. right. It's like it's it's like Google. It's become its own word. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So I, we have some. Brennan, uh, unfortunately, uh, we have some well, follow up. Sometimes I literally. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, this week's uh, follow up comes from the Ian Buck. Uh, let's see. Anything of interest here? Yeah, totally. So um, his brother just got an iPhone 5s, yeah. and. Um, He's not going to pay for service. Instead, he's just going to use it on Wi-Fi, I guess. And um, that sounds pretty pretty interesting. What do you what do you guys think about that? An expensive iPod Touch. Yes, but it might be. Well, you know, until today, I guess there was no other option. Yeah, no. that's true. Um, I think. I mean, it leaves the door open, obviously, using on a cellular carrier in the future too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So so long and as it has like... GPS and better hardware too, but. Yeah, so long as it's so long as it's like unlocked and stuff, that it seems like it'd be really, really useful for that purpose. Even though it's kind of pricey, as you mentioned before. Well, he um, didn't he didn't mention if it was used or not, but I'm gonna guess that it was pre-owned or used because I I really doubt that it's new. Mm, okay, gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. Oh yeah, that would make sense with it. Yeah, see, I I have a five S. So in my mind, the 5S is still the most recent phone, and people who own sixes are from the future. Oh, is that right? Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, futuristic, awesome people with your I'm from space the gray. Future. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because because nobody can be more uh, can be can be more living in the present than I am. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Which couldn't be further from the truth in so many ways. Anyhow. Um, it, it's it's really awesome. Like I've uh, I have mad respect for people who who can figure stuff out. Like uh, to 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 use a, a phone like that, um, e- even with the with the phone not not functioning. Like I yep. I had wanted to make that plunge a long time ago. Like bef- before I had like a cell contract, right? Yep. Um. Oh well, you know, look look at these awesome Android devices that could be used for so many other things. Maybe. Um. But well. Yeah, I mean, like you can't use a what, what were they calling it? The HG, the like the original uh, the Android G1. phone. The G1. Was it was that a G1? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I knew a yeah, guy like, who had a G1. He was in my tenth grade Spanish class, and I remember sitting like a row over from him, and he's like, "You guys, I got the Android G1," and I'm like, "Huh?" <laughs> <laughs> like that would that would that would have been so awesome. It was in pretty, the time that it pretty existed. funny too. 
Yeah. I remember seeing a, a G1, the friend one. And it seemed, I don't know, it was, it was cool. And actually, I think one person had in, uh, he must have been sophomore year for me, um, like one team had a G1, and someone on the ski team had an iPhone 3G. Mm-hmm. And so it was, those were both like modern, you know, new, expensive phones. And it was like, whoa, you have one of those? Cool. I, you know, I'd play around with it a little bit. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, I like the, like just the 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 uh, phones free of 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 the cell carriers is such a such a fascinating thing to me, and it's it's cool that that um, Ian and company got that working if they did, and if if they got it with cell service, like oh my gosh, even cooler if if they found a good a good way to make that happen. So yeah, yeah, Ian, and, Ian and is then, sort of a, an expert at doing that. Um, he had a uh, first gen Nexus Seven. And then when he broke uh-huh. his, I gave him my first gen Nexus 7, because it was a tablet, and who needs a tablet? And um, mm-hmm. he would play Ingress and use uh, Google Voice and do all these things to use it sort of like a phone, but without service and not totally as a phone. Oh, that's And yes, awesome. he carried it in his pocket. Yes, he really did. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Ian, I'm, Ian, you're crazy. If, if you're listening to this, Ian, I'm giving you digital high fives right now. Like, so many digital high fives. That's yeah. That's that's awesome. That is so cool. Um, and he also had some had some follow up about like Meteor as well. But I think I think this is probably in reference to maybe we were talking about like browser stink or, or yeah, something um, like that. Gulp and grunt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, Meteor. I it's 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 such a cool platform. Like it, yep. it's so cool that that Ian was uh was was able to like build build an app with it and like oh, I'm so, someday. Someday I will build a Meteor app. Someday, like a legit Meteor app, and not just pushing the Heroku button to deploy one of the tutorials because yeah, I've definitely course. done that like six times. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, my but... only fear about Meteor is that it's not plug and play with like a lot of ecosystem that's already out there. Because you yeah. know they have their full stack, you know their full stack perspective, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. that, that's that's great and really powerful, but it's also limiting. Oh, totally. Yeah, you you basi- you're basically using a, a a very prepackaged version of Passport to handle auth if you need auth or yeah. um, you know, stuff stuff like that. It's it's very pre-set up, which is I mean, on one hand it's kind of a good way to get acclimated to that if you don't if you haven't um haven't ever had to set up an auth system before, but I mean, if you if you've ever written anything that has to ever talk to Twitter, you're probably fine for setting up some degree of OAuth, probably. maybe. Yeah. So somebody who has not yet set up an OAuth thing, but will be very shortly. <laughs> um, Good luck. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's going to be a party. Looking forward to it. But, um, you know, like, uh, I, I really want to do sign-in with Twitter first because I feel like that's going to, you know, I, I've done sign-in with Google before, but that's, like, a matter of setting your API bits um, appropriately. Who, oh, who, yeah. knows about, who knows about sign-in with Twitter? That seems weirder than weird but yeah you know i i remember you know as a young web developer you know after the stage where i would roll my own login system because nobody wants to do that now but there was this point where everybody was like yeah you sign in with facebook yeah you sign in with this sign in with that and i'm like oh my gosh do you know how hard it is to do those things yeah i mean sure it might be cool it might be maybe great for users although i don't know if that's true yeah, I, totally. I just, as a developer, it's like, you know, maybe I kind of actually do totally want to go back to just making those users use my own username and password. Yeah. So much easier. But, um, but I don't know. I think user experience, I don't know. Personally, I would, I'd rather just like, okay, sure, Facebook or okay, sure. So that's really interesting because well, I am the totally exact opposite. Like I would never use a third party auth to get into a site. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on the service. If it's, Especially if it's something quick that I'm not going to use in the future, like Facebook, and then from Facebook, mm-hmm. and then it's gone, account deleted. See, I feel like it's press. the. I feel like for me, it's the opposite because if it's something quick and I don't care about, I'll generate a unique username and password, and then I'll just log in. And if they get hacked nine months from now, cool, the hackers are going to hate me for it. Yeah, totally. But and then also for users using Facebook or Google or something, is the because they're handling all of these. You know, managing of passwords, and then yeah. you know, you in the future can switch to a new platform or whatever, and not have to migrate as much stuff. Where it's That's true. Your, Although I wonder how side. often you migrate your user database and authentication components 
That's probably the least migrated part of your system. Yeah, you can help. I don't know. Whenever <laughs> I am presented with one of the screens, it's like, did I log in with Twitter or Facebook before? I'm not sure. I'll do both. No, totally. And That's, now I have I, 12 accounts. Crap. See, for, for me, like, I would, I would pick one. Sign in with Twitter, sign in with Facebook, sign in with Google. And if I had to pick one of those, for most things, I'd probably pick sign in with Google, which I know is a little weird because you're kind of... Um, you know, from a privacy standpoint, of of all those, like Facebook and Google are probably the ones that are most. Um, but they know how to manage your passwords. Exactly, exactly, right? Yeah. And so, like, in, in addition, in addition to that, like, e- even if you were to roll your, even if I were, for example, to roll my own um, auth stack, I would probably do something OAuth based, but maybe not base it on on googly things because OAuth is OAuth is cool for a number of other reasons. Um. Which we we might have talked about before. Have we talked about a lot before? I don't. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh man, maybe a little bit. Possibly. Like I, I don't know. OAuth seems really cool to me. As but as as I mentioned, I think in the fringe. Hey, I, I, identity. Uh, you know, kind of kind of access and authorization stuff. Is, oh is yeah, my I jam, guess I guess we so. have talked about that. That. Yeah, but um, there's like a um. Like, like the thing for me is like if I see a small developer doing something like oh sign in with Twitter like and by a small developer you know that could even be like a like a Marco even though Marco would not do would not do sign in with Twitter no no um, he would not he literally would not by definition but yeah. you know if I were to see like a Marco type person you do, he, he would make a, his own service called sign in with Marco yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah uh, undersign or something oh yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, but uh, the the um, like I could see that, and I could recognize that what they're trying to do there is is like simplify their lives as as developers, yeah, possibly. But like Spotify, and Spotify is the biggest thing I can I can see for this. Like when they log in with when I log into Facebook, no, when I log into Spotify through Facebook, I know that what they're doing there is they're trying to get at my timeline, oh, and yeah. that irks me to no end. Mm-hmm. Like it's like uh, yeah. You're you're constantly working against me there, Spotify, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But like that's that's the reason why I don't like pay for Spotify, right? Because like that that thing right there just like eats away at the part of my brain that you know the the lizard brain that's like I don't know, I don't I don't really like that they're they're fighting me in this in this way. You and your lizard why, brain. Yeah, I know, I know. It's way too rational for Spotify and Facebook. Slither, slither, etc. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, well, do you want to hear a follow up on the Zenfone Two? You bet. You bet. So, I they think this is, this is the last time I'm going to talk about this phone, probably for a while, because it's done now. Yeah. So, nice. since the last time we talked, which was last Wednesday, mm-hmm. uh, I told you that night that the port had started. I had sent all the information I had, and everything looked to be good. Well, the next day we got a message sent to us from some place, probably called India, from some guy saying, <laughs> we have uh, information here concerning your recent uh, request for a port. Um, would you like to call? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, I can't do an, an Indian accent, so you'll just have to fill in the blank there. So apparently the port failed because they typed the activation key in wrong or something. Cool. And so, you know, I sent them the activation key in an email. It's not like they couldn't have just tried again. Uh, so I literally just read the key again from the email to them over the phone, and it worked. So that's pretty mm-hmm. suspicious. But, you know, it happens, I guess. You know, keyboards are different in different parts of the world. Actually, no, they're not. Um, so then... They are. Yeah, kind of. Working work phone support's hard, hard yeah. to people get tired well, you know what's weird though Especially, is yeah. th- I had sent it to email support first, and then the phone support picked up, and I I'm not sure how that works. So apparently, yeah, that's very weird. They I, I gave them a new SIM card number for for the system that was unactivated, ready to go, and apparently they lost that email or they just didn't get it. So maybe their ticket system didn't like that I yeah. replied to the wrong email. I'm not exactly yeah. sure what happened, but after the call, <laughs> I emailed them to ask what's, what was up with that, because they were going to send us, by express mail, a new SIM card. Uh huh. And that would have been fine, but my mom is on call this week, so she needed a phone that would work. So that was kind of a problem. So that's why I wanted to yeah. use my own SIM card that I had already. 
Yeah. Uh, so, uh, once I had emailed support, um, uh, the day after, so on last Thursday, uh, in 25 minutes using the new SIM card number, they got me ported and it was perfect. Nice. Yeah. And so, uh, my mom's had the phone since awesome. last Thursday and she really likes it. It's super fast. And so on her old phone, and she told me about this, she could never, so if you, if you guys know anything about Android, on Android, there's three buttons on the bottom. There's back, there's home, and then there's the app switcher. And so she always used home and back, but she never really used mm-hmm. the third button. She didn't really know what it was because it was just so slow and she just thought she was doing something wrong on her old phone. Mm-hmm. Well, now she keeps telling me about how fast it is to switch between these apps using the third button. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it's for. <laughs> So I, uh, that's no, pretty that, Did that change happen? Uh, it's been in Android 4 since it came out. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I, I last heard too, so, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> so cool. So, yeah, it's really great. Uh, the phone's holding up really well. She's taking pictures with it. She's so doing everything. That's... Is it again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Gar- yeah, so she, she, she likes it a lot. Yeah, I think no, that's it's awesome. good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so in addition to that, today she's on call. She's on call, on call until Friday. And so her, her company, Alina, they would send out pager messages to everybody's pagers whenever they got a call they needed to work on or whatever. Well, her pager stopped working, and basically they didn't want to give her a new one. But they did put in the system so that you could get a text message whenever you would be getting uh, a page. Nice. And so I set up this Tasker app to scream at her whenever she would get um, a Tasker message or a, a, a work page message. And so basically it beeps SOS yeah. in Mor- Morse code and then it reads the message out loud and then it does a few high pitched squeals and then it vibrates relentlessly for a little bit. <laughs> And she, she, she didn't, and she demanded I make this for her at eight in the morning because, uh, you know, it's a new phone and she wasn't hearing the calls, you know, the phone's just on her desk and she's kind of ignoring it because she's working when the pages are coming in. And so she demands that I make this for her. And I, and I start, I open up to ask her and I just, you know, make it in 25 minutes and I send her an email with the little APK file, the app file. And I tell her how to install it, and she does, and it works. And it's like, oh, man, that's so cool. You can just make programs for programs. It's so good. So, yeah. yeah that's, man. That's, that's so cool. So there you go. That's the Zenfone 2. I hope everybody gets one for two ninety nine. You may or may not go to Straight Talk, but uh, wherever you go, you'll love the phone. It's great. Uh, if the, you want the perfect something, in power you know, if Android you, if, if you were thinking about getting an iPod Touch... But you wanted a phone also, this would be what you should get. Like, yeah, it is a, it well, a, I mean, it has a better for camera. Unlock 299. It's 64 gigs of memory, I... or, or storage, I mean, 4 gigs of memory. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's iPod Touch esque. And you don't have to put a SIM card in if you don't want to. I will keep oh, that in mind. so cool. Like, yeah. Like that ever happens. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> in addition Brandon, to. Brandon, you're definitely at like a two. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I was kind of stumbling over what you guys were saying because the the delay the delay is real, as they would say. Is there a delay for both of us? Uh, sometimes. One of us. What? Not getting any delay whatsoever. Do <laughs> the receiving. Like when you said delays, whatsoever, it but... took like three seconds for it to get here. Oh lordy! Eh, I'm sorry, guys. That's Let's, fine. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can fix something here. Maybe if I turn off my camera, that'll help. Oh, I think that happened better? the other week. Uh, we'll see if it's better for long. You know? well, it, it auto-turned off for a second, like 30 seconds ago. That's, that's probably smart. Maybe uh, maybe, maybe uh, if it's not spe- sending a bunch of high-quality HD video of my face, Yeah. maybe it'll... Yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll try that. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Okay, so uh, do you want to tell us about this hacker team leak attack? This kid? Me? Uh, anybody. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know anything about it. I'm not yeah, a hacker. Well, it's huge, the right? General so, problem. yeah, go for it, Brian. Take it away. Oh, okay. Um, so, Hacker Team is a company that would, to my best knowledge, about this topic in a week, I will say, um, that will make things to, I guess, spy on companies or governments or other users um, for 
the software that it would be for other countries, you know, dictatorships, I think was an example or for governments or something or whatever, I guess. Uh, so they were leaked. WikiLeaks published a whole bunch of stuff. And so emails from, you know, I think the entire existence of their company or something like that doubt, including a bunch of zero days for flash and um, I'm sure others. And so it, just, it was just interesting to see what kind of stuff the company has done. Um, I've seen lots of comments of other security researchers. Um, there was, I think, an AMA by a former hacker team employee on Reddit the other day. Oh my um, gosh. It's been interesting to see. Uh, notably, like, an iOS, they only support iOS that's jailbroken, which, you know, doesn't really mean anything. I don't know. Wait for someone yeah. else to do it. Jailbreaks yeah. require physical access to jailbreak in an optimal situation you know it's timely and then you have to install stuff um, yeah that part made me uh, seriously laugh it was it was just too funny to see you know basically oh well yeah we support ios but you have to be jailbroken first voiding all the warranties breaking the eulas yeah of course like uh so I, I don't remember if it was infosec taylor swift who retweeted this i'm gonna see if i can go splunking and find it um but the Basically, someone tweeted, "Everyone who works in infosec should buy an iPad and not uh, not unlock it, or you know, and and not jailbreak it, um, because it's like the you know, somebody said it was like a security you can get. I don't know about that because, I mean, what are you gonna do? Buy an Android tablet and put Linux on it? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's 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 such such an interesting thing to think about too. And I know the one we've got linked in the show notes here is for Flash and Windows. Yep, Flash um, of and course, Windows. Like, Flash in particular is all is all like um, you know, the new C, uh, chief information security officer of of, of Facebook. Um, right. Yes. The guy. Decried. What? Who yeah. is that guy? I don't know his name, but I oh, know what he looks he is like. So- yeah. He runs in the in the circles with like the Chrome security researchers, yep. Adrian Porterfeld. Like I I high five those people so much. Yeah. Through the internet, they're so cool. Um, I I need to grab his name here, but um, but he basically said it's time for browsers to just say time time to end of life flash. And I think Chrome and uh, so yeah, Chrome and Firefox, Firefox both have outlawed flash like two days ago. They, they really just, Chrome did as well. I I, I think yeah. so. Like it's or it's it's either Chrome did it or it's impending in Chrome. But I I know Firefox is outloaded. I saw the pop up the other day. Um. Yeah, you know it's it's pretty bad. Yeah, totally. I mean, I've I've heard that there's a similar. I couldn't find any documentation for that quite yet, but that might be because my connection is a little bit wonky. A little bit. Yes. As you guys may have noticed by now, a little bit, but, maybe. Um, you know, in the editing, in the edited version, you won't hear any of those stutters or problems at all. Yay! And that's not true. Ah, uh, well, you know. Yeah, that's right because you don't edit the show. I don't edit the show. See, now you get that joke, and nobody knows that joke. <laughs> I don't know. Well, don't... now everybody knows the joke because we just made it. But it's we funny because because if I edited the show, that joke wouldn't be in there. But since it is in there, is it a meta game? Am I trying to say that I do or don't edit the show? Do yes. you edit them all out? I don't know. Time? Do I? Listeners, no, you'll have to find out. <laughs> I don't listen. <laughs> That's okay. Don't 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 listen. It might be dangerous. I've heard. I'll never know what's going on. I listen to the opening, and that's about That's it. That's all you need. <laughs> I get to hear the start of that song I made. Yep. A while ago in Red Band. Nice. Wah 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 wah. That's us. Yeah, I'm I'm really bad at singing. As if you guys if you guys remember from the time that I covered Taylor Swift. Yeah. On the air, that yep. was fun. That was that was actually yeah, really good. I, sounds vaguely familiar. Mm. <laughs> that was that that made me smile quite a bit. Um. Yeah, Alex Stamos is the name of the Facebook CISO. I, nice. I I call him I call him a CISO because that's the term that I'm familiar with, but I think they might have a different this term is just for CSO? it in the book Faceland. Yeah, Chief Security Officer, yeah. because all of the security that Facebook is, you know, they're, they're in- not they're not so much interested as in like uh, you know, like uh the 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 like physical security. Though I'm sure they're concerned with that too. 
but security to them is like data security or information security. You know, it's really bad when Facebook, the company that wants you to play all the stupid Flash games on Facebook, the company that wants you to use all of these, you know, little widgety things on the website, wants to destroy a major mechanism to do that. Oh, totally. Yeah, I, I think it's just great. Yeah, like it's 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 such a sea change from where we were even just like seven years ago, right? And it all started but, because of that iPhone. Seven years ago, everything was different in in the web seven years ago. Yeah, pretty much. ECMAScript seven. Oh, we'll get there. They, they had that seven years ago, right? No, we barely no? even had five seven years ago. Yeah. Well, you I know, think CSS three was even really a thing then. Not so much. So so we. Wait, so there wasn't like any uh any like box, um like flex box? No flex box no, or anything? No, that that came out in two thousand ten or twelve. I, I, know. I um, still haven't used Flexbox. Flexbox Well I did teensy bit, but not really. Flexbox is bay. Flexbox is like the D three of CSS. You wow. guys in your your big libraries. Could I could I use any more acronyms? No, I don't I don't think you can. No. I, yeah. The ROI on that CSS D three is 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 through the parking lot. Through the there, parking lot. Did I did I did I business did I business there? Uh, well, was I think that, I think you're good? you're you're going down the wrong highway, and oh. I think we should take a de- detour to Apple Watch sales. Okay, sounds good to me. Uh, it turns out apparently they're slowing down. Yeah, the Big surprise. The, the, that's oh, they're, they're slowing down. But is it is it is it real or is it fake? I bet oh, it's no. real, but I also am not surprised at all. Like, do you really think only 2,000 units sold? Like, is that, or 2,000 units in a seven day moving average? What does that metric even mean, honestly? Um, Business stuff, that's for sure. I don't know. I feel like 2,000 is pretty low for an entire week's worth of sales. Yeah, I'd agree with that. That's like, that's like, uh, the number of cars that are sold in the Minneapolis St. Paul metropolitan area. In yeah, a week. exactly. And I feel like Apple Watches are a lot cheaper. And way more impulsively sure. purchased. Yeah, but at the same time, people aren't going. I tell people I spent four hundred my watch, and they're like, "What?" They're like, "It's everyone has one." Yeah, and I guess so. It's it's saturated the market. I'm I'm I kind of believe it. Maybe it's a little low end. I don't know, but I I it, it, it would make sense to me that they are not selling very many anymore. So so what what will revitalize those sales or? What what can help that? Um, Apple Watch I, Two, iOS <laughs> Two with native applications. If people see cool stuff, um, another version coming out, a, re- a drop in price. Um, yeah, I I feel that like a drop in price is probably pretty imminent. I, yeah. Well, maybe if not imminent, like sometime in the next couple of years, it'll you know. Couple of years, at, at I'm most, thinking months. In the next year, two years. Oh yeah, absolutely. But you know, I I have to. I have to channel Syracuse and take the infinite time scale argument that is, of course, now no. not attributed to Syracuse but Marco. Like, I, 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 I probably say it's because because I recently bought an Apple Watch after much cajoling mm-hmm. um, from myself. Um, I, I had to kind of, I, I have to kind of think. Oh well, they're, they're not going to drop it to one ninety nine yet. They're well, not maybe not one ninety nine, but a hundred dollars off. So, like, what what's the base model? Three forty nine. Yeah, so like it'd be two forty nine after a hundred. Hundred dollar drop, how's that? Is that yeah. better? Uh, yeah, I think that yeah, would that's mostly better. I, I think that would be better because that would price it very competitively with the Android Wear watches, which of which there are none, yeah, any, anymore. Um, what they got rid of the Urbane? Well, the thing is, like, even <laughs> if they exist, they kind of also don't exist because nobody cares. Roger that. Yeah, I don't know. So, so what do you think is more likely? Do you think? Um, there will be a new model like within the next year and a half or, or are we going to be using this model for a long time? Um, I bet, I bet. Well, I imagine maybe in the spring they might release a new one then, but I, I don't know. That's I, I, I would hope they see that people, maybe people will, but of course won't be buying a new one every year. I for sure I'm not, but at the same time they need to keep re- releasing new ones to keep them nice and maybe have a new feature that would bring a new customer. In the first yeah. Like, I feel like the watch has a really weird issue because the, the first iPhones, 
they actually had deficiencies that Apple could correct, you know, each model year, even in the S step. You know, it, either you add 3G, you add speed, you add uh, glass on both sides because that's cool. You you add um, <laughs> Siri. You you know you can add things to make the phone actually better. But I think it's a lot harder to do that on the watch, hardware wise, where where you can do it with software a little bit easier. But there's not that much there because it's so limited in how you can use it. It seems like yeah, there, there, there's definitely a different. He's cutting out. Yeah. What did, am I to where? If you said words in the last 20 seconds, we didn't hear them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much not at all. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm sorry, gang. Is it better now? Or? It, uh, it persists. Okay, let's, let's try this. Oh, he's changed. He's, he's chatting so, now. He says, hey. I, hey. I, with uh, 5E. <laughs> um... Yeah, we don't hear you at all, but that that is a lovely sentence you wrote. No. Okay. <laughs> Continuously. Well, something on his end is pretty angry. Uh, yeah, I know. He can type us responses, and then we'll just read it out loud. Uh, we, yeah, we can we can work with it. Different. I'm I'm trying to alert him with the digital touch on his Apple Watch. Oh, Maybe that's that hilarious. Then in good spirits. I haven't I. I tried out digital touch way within a very soon after he got his Apple Watch. Have not done it since. Oh. It's the first time. You know, that's a pretty bad sign. I don't know. He's the Brandon's the only person I know. Of Apple Watch. See, I think that's also I, a pretty know, bad sign. Um, yeah. Well, actually, okay. Take it back. I know someone else who does, but I don't know him very well. You don't want to poke so him. I think suddenly starting to do my little. Weird. Yeah, that might be a little bit weird. Yeah. So now I'm gonna draw him a frowny face <laughs> to make him. No, that we are sad. We can't hear him. Uh, he says that his his Apple Watch is in airplane mode, so he's not going to get it. Oh, You'll get it at some point. Hopefully. That's so sad. He he uh, added a, his own frowny face too. But it was it was all nice and proportional, unlike my my finger. Oh, there's two of them now. Oh no! So I what don't know. I don't. Do oh 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 oh! I hear something. Uh, I don't, I don't know okay, what's going on. Let's try this one more time. Hey. Okay. I could have sworn you changed shirts. <laughs> it's kind of what I thought too. It's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can hear you slightly. Slightly. Okay. Let me let me try something else then. One last something else. It's the like five frames per second video. Yeah, but... you might want to just try no video because that seems to work better. I don't even know how to do no video on this thing. There we go. That's how. Okay. So I'm, I'm working from iPad now. I'm, I'm actually like talking sideways into the iPad because hopefully that will. Incidentally, it sounds iPad. better. Yay. Okay. So I, I, th- I think this should work. I can't hook my, my, my snowball. Um, yeah. The, the mic up to it, but no. this should, this should be better. Okay. Well, um, we'll, tr- we'll, we'll go with that. Thanks guys. Yeah. Sorry about no that. problem. We entertained the crowd while you were away. Yeah, also, I, I heard they, everything they you said. This, that will don't become as the most uh, entertaining, I don't know, four minutes of a podcast episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 So uh, do you want to talk about new Apple iPods? Kind of a weird surprise in the midweek here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, when I woke up this morning, and well, when I when I found myself at work this morning, um, I, uh, I noticed that uh, iPods were missing from the Apple website. Um, the tw- the Twitters were a buzz, uh, and I was kind of like, oh my gosh, this means the end of the iPod. Like they're not like, like that's it. They're just gonna take it off, and they're gonna be like, what iPod? I don't remember the iPod. Do you remember the iPod? Because I sure don't. Um, and but sure enough, it seems like this afternoon they revitalized the line with a couple of new kind of exciting things. I think we're officially um, out of the A5. Um, processor family now, right? It's all. Doesn't one of the Apple iPod. TVs still have one? Uh, uh pretty sure the current, Apple TV has. Yeah, a cur- five. current gen Apple TV, which is like five gens old now, uh, still has a refined A5, one of the smaller architecture ones. Okay. Well, I mean, at least people don't have to develop for that, right? Yeah, not I really. Think, I think I think they take A5 CPUs and uh, ship them with single core enabled. Mm-hmm. 
or they make a single core version of the A5. It hasn't been yeah. released. Well, at least it's been years. I want to say they they're broken in cores, but not a clear one. Yeah. Well, I, either way, it's it's super awesome to see some some updates to the um, to the iPod line because you know as as we all know, it's it's not really uh, a line that's been updated in a in kind of a drastic way. No. I mean, well, look at look at me calling it drastic. They added a couple colors and they redid the internals, but other than that, like the the screen, the form factor seems to be very similar. And it's so funny because I feel like they could they could make the iPod Touch line so much cooler by renaming it and updating it more frequently. No, totally. I agree completely. You know, it's, it could be so the um, they don't. iPad Nano. Yeah. Because that's what totally. it is. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Brian, do you want to go over what they added today in the new iPod Touches and others? I got that. All right. So, uh, new color options. I believe it's now, without looking at photo finishers, you got your space gray, black, dark color. You got your silver, your gold. You also have a, a blue, a pink, and then you get product red. So you can buy any of those, except for product red, probably. If it's like any other Apple product, it's product red. Buy everything but the red in the stores, anywhere. Red, only Apple. Uh, the new CPU and an M8 CPU is clocked at 1.1 gig. Did we lose Brian? I, I, think, I think the entire internet is having trouble today. No. Well, so one thing that I think might be at play, not that it's terribly interesting... Is that they're doing a bunch of road work on my street right now? Oh, yeah. So somebody, some somebody's gonna start hacking at the Comcast line, and at that point, I'll just lose you guys entirely. But as yeah. as Brian was saying, um, like they up- upgraded a bunch of things, added some more colors, um, changed the pricing a little bit, and oh my gosh, the the A8 and M8 motion coprocessor oh, yeah. together, like that's that's gonna be so awesome because mm-hmm. it basically brought them into the the uh, second decade of the 21st century. Look at that. Um, and, and even just having the A8 versus the A5, that will go a long way in making it performant. Oh, you know, totally. at least for a few years until they have the A11, which the, when when they'll update again. So we'll see about that. Um, a gig of memory, that's good. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think the old iPod Touch had only 512, so that's an improvement that's right. already. Yeah, and 512 was like the first, you know, like everything from a 3GS on up had yep. 512. Mm-hmm. So it's it's good to see that. Another way that it's kind of joining the the, uh, the teens. But on the of, other uh, hand, you know, a gig isn't that much, especially since we know they won't update it for three or four years. That's correct. That's absolutely right. So we're going to be RAM starved within a year. And th- it's not like apps are getting smaller on iOS. They're getting bigger and more RAM hungry, especially, you know, with all of the new new Apple APIs and things. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, non- nonetheless, it's. It's it's better than nothing, I guess. So Syracuse yeah. can get his can get his new iPod Touch. I think he's pretty satisfied with his iPhone. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, oh. So they also have Bluetooth 4.1, which apparently is a first for Apple. Oh, how nice. Uh, I don't know what that. I don't. I don't really know what you would do with Bluetooth on an iPod Touch, but I guess a Bluetooth headset, maybe. Ooh, is it is it Apple Watch? It can't be Apple Watch compatible, is it? I mean. Why wouldn't it be? Well, the, do they put the NFC chip inside it for like uh, Touch ID or or Apple Pay? Oh, it, you're right. The, yeah. Uh, uh, well, since it has no Touch ID, I guess not. Yeah. So I I'm thinking then that it probably wouldn't be ready for Apple Watch. No, even though probably like, not. I, oh my gosh! Imagine how awesome it would be if if you didn't need to, um, you know, if you could have an Apple Watch but not a cell contract, right? Wouldn't that so, be cool? Yeah. Uh, like this is this is the reason why. Why, like the you know, an off contract, you know, carrier free cell phone is so nice. Yeah, because it becomes not a cell phone, but it becomes a whatever you need it to be that also can do cell phone capabilities for the few things you need a cell phone for. Like, yeah, uh, it That's has awesome. um, an eight megapixel camera, which is pretty good. Totally. Um, my uh, high school bought um, a bunch of iPad minis so that they could do like um, recording and stuff instead of buying new like video recording cameras they just bought ipad minis and they you know recorded all of their morning news video with those and so uh, you know in a way i guess they could almost do that with ipod touches in the future if they wanted to uh you know little hand cameras 
No, absolutely. And it'll run iMovie and you can just edit it straight away there and send it where you need to send it. Yeah. That's, so that might so actually slick. be, that actually might work. Uh, yeah. or, or, you know, the news, of, the news of the future are those Snapchats, right? Oh, totally. With the, with the, you know, the branded like discover. Yeah. Uh, videos. Cause that's oh, what high yeah. school news is all about, right? No, absolutely. Snapchat. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as, yeah. as, as, as much flack as we've given the verge thus far, uh, in, in the fringe. Which is pretty minor, pretty generous, um, you know, sort of flack. Like their Snapchat is really interesting. I've I've had fun seeing what Sam Shepard and oh, yeah. have, have been cooking up there. It's it's been fun. Mm-hmm. They're really they're doing some interesting things in the medium. Um, but like if if you can if if we can start looking at those devices as as like actually you know somewhat legitimately okay for for creating content in a uh, for for hashtag brands as it were yeah um then then you're like that's that's huge that's awesome i mean then 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 the the barrier to somebody becoming a brand right you know some some awesome person who is not backed by a corporation right now like the theoretically that that's lower which is a cool thing i, I think definitely yeah so yeah. apparently so, there's no more wrist strap i guess yeah I had figured that was that was going to be on the way out. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, children are uh, prone to drop things. It, no, it's it's totally cool. But it like the mechanism that they had for adding it, it's it seemed like a. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. It seemed like an like a like a afterthought that was a very well designed afterthought. Right. That is the name of the game when your name is Johnny Ives. Indeed. It, oh, it's it's not even. Like, Hi, Brian. Most... I'm back. Hey, welcome. How, how's your router doing? <sighs> does does that happen often? Uh, twice in the last couple of days. Uh, I, I'm, you oh, know, I'm gosh. thinking it's been pretty hot. It's probably what it yeah. was. Uh, well, the thing is, normally when the internet goes down, it's just the internet down. It loses connection to the ISP. This time, the network went down. Oh. And that's happened twice in the last few days. I think I'm just going to call him up and say, I'm having issues. Can we get a new router? Mm, sounds reasonable. It's six years old. Well, oh it might gosh. be time. Hey, it's almost yeah, as old as the iPod Touch. Hey, nice. do you, what? Do you guys rent the modem, or do you do you own it? We we do own it, but you know it's all Questy, so you kind of have to get a new one through them. Yeah, yeah, Roger that. You can get um, a Quest modem at Best Buy, but it costs exactly the same amount, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you're not getting anything, and nope. you have to go to Best Buy. Well, uh, if if you're a Best Buy Platinum member, which I happen to be, you can get some deals occasionally. Oh, how nice! We buy yeah. all of our major appliances from Best Buy, so we're we're Platinum status. Oh, nice! Ooh, shiny. So Pretty we were color. just about to talk about pricing for the new iPod Touches. You want to talk about those? Sure. At what point did I get cut off? I was uh, going. I think you got cut yeah. off around processors. processors uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. I was just going so fast. I'm like, I didn't even notice. I was not in your tab. I didn't even notice it was frozen. Oh, that's so funny. Just, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, prices, 16 gigabyte for 199 32 for 249 64 for 299 and the Apple exclusive, 128 for 399 Oh, my gosh. It's so, it's so interesting to think that they're actually going up to 128 for these devices. It seems like... I mean, well, while they're definitely like media devices, right? So you can imagine somebody trying to fit all their music, all their videos, all their whatever on, on it. It like 128 seems like a little bit like overkill. I mean, even this this iPad that I'm using to talk with you right now, I think it's 64. And I, when when I realized that it was 64, I was like, score, look at that. Um, but I, I don't know, like 128 seems huge to me. Like that's that's larger than an SSD in one of the computers I own. I mean, like, I used to think the same thing. I got a 32 gig Nexus 6, and Mm -hmm. I have three gigs left of storage space. Most of that is from pictures and videos Mm -hmm. of the dog. But, you know, space disappears really fast these days, way faster than it used to. And I don't know. I feel like 128, especially when you're trying to replace your iPod Classic, I feel like 128 for 399 is pretty expensive, and you don't get that much out of it. Yeah, definitely. Did you mention the the model ID? No, we did not mention it. No, not yet. We left that one for you. So, uh, as we are actually doing the fringe, I came upon this on Twitter. So, 
the iPod Touch 6th sixth, sixth generation has a model ID of 7, 1. Um, whereas, but the iPod Touch 5 was 5, 1. So it makes you think that maybe there was a middle iPod Touch that just never came to be. And they were like, screw it. And they waited another year and came out with this one. So what do you think, what do you think caused that? Um, like, I, I would imagine maybe delays on, on someone and, you know, focusing on other products causing that touch to be delayed. Uh, you know, they don't probably don't want to release something halfway through a cycle when they're, you know, between the, the yeah. 5S and the 6, when the 6 is going to change it all. I mean, they didn't change the size of the iPod Touch this year, so that means we'll be stuck on the, what, 5-inch or 4-inch? Yeah, the 4-inch. The, the okay. So I think that's probably another way to keep costs down, keep it a little smaller. Yeah. So I wonder if they held back on whatever their, you know, 6, 1 was because of uh, a part con- constraint. So, like, if it was for the camera or if it was for storage or or yeah. something. Yeah, like the screen's not all sapphire, is it? Like that—that mm-hmm. that was always I'm really thing. unlikely. Yeah, I—I I didn't think so, but I mean, th- that would be—that would definitely be a thing that would slow down uh, or, or halt production. Maybe, maybe, maybe six one was the sapphire one, and they decided that that was. Yeah, there's just no way they could have met those demands. We shouldn't charge eight hundred dollars for an iPod Touch. Yeah, I know. Are right? you sure? I think people would love it though. <laughs> the sapphire. Yeah. But another 129, and you get uh, cellular. Right, of course. <laughs> Just like the iPads. Yeah. So, uh, iPod Nanos and Shuffles, how about those? Uh, for the most part, just new colors. That's right, it? Your, yep. That's so the, weird. You got your pink, your blue, and your product red, in addition to the gray, silver, and gold. Uh, are, they, are they ever going to update the Nano to run iOS, do you think? Or is that too too close to, a, to a, the iPod Touch? Um, well, the iPod Nano does not have a Wi-Fi card, so... That's true. Uh, I think it would be so limited that why bother? And that's kind of why they... I bet why they have what they have on there. Um, uh, John Gruber had a little post about the iPod Nano. You know, it looks like iOS 6. You got your rounded, your skeuomorphic. What's going on there? Um, he was saying he was tipped that the whole team has been working on other things, so there there's just no one there to update it for the new look. Oh, that's so sad. See, I, I used to love the iPod Nano back when they had the square ones where I fashioned yep. my own iWatch back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. But it's you know, you're right. It it looks anachronistic and it looks just darn strange. You know in, Especially in with those bright colors there. surrounding that weird faux metal glass drabness. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like who who who's expecting like the Apple user experience continuity? Um, well, is going to is going to look at one of those, right? If you if if you're expecting continuity, you're you're buying the wrong product. That's that's for sure. That's for sure, right? Um, and at the same the, time, the iPod Nano is a weird spot because it's 16 gigabytes. So is the lowest iPod Touch, where the iPod Touch is only fifty dollars more. Oh yeah. my gosh! You know, you know that's what people right. will do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you gotta go for the touch. I still think they need to rebrand the iPod Touch. Just call it an iPad Nano, and then you can just have one one iPod, the square iPod uh, Nano, and just call that the iPod, and then just be done with it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel like it's time for the iPod to become a legacy thing, or or like a. To, to be consolidated, I guess. I mean, I get the idea to have a dedicated music player. There's there's a lot of times when I'm going out to walk the dog or just going outside in the garden doing weeding or whatever that I don't want to take my phone because it's, it's literally huge or it's expensive. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the iPod Nano or what I would rebrand just to be the iPod would fit that role great. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, heck, I, st- I still use my Nano for uh, my, my, like, now seven year old iPod Nano. Yep. I still I still use it to um to play music every once in a while when I'm going for a run or something like that. Oh yeah. Because it is it is so nice for that purpose because it doesn't need a Wi Fi radio or any other radio for that matter. And it's well, okay if you drop it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact <laughs> dropping it's you know, it's kinda of fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> not not super fun. I like I like it when it continues to work, but um I mean, now, now that it's seven years old, it's it's just kind of like, um, 
it's not it's not as important, you know? Yeah. yeah. I haven't used my iPod Nano. I have uh, the gold or yellow one. It's the awful color. But um, it's the fifth generation Nano with the camera on it and the FM radio. It was a – it's oh. like their, their final push with click wheel before they're like, okay, screw it. Um, I have the – a uh, short, stubby, fat nano. I had one of those too. I, I've since given it to my sister. Like so she has that nice is the iPod weirdest one. Like Brian Mitchell in the back. <laughs> That's funny. But um, I I boot it up every so often just to be like, oh, and then I turn it off. I mean, uh, like I have a Creative Zen something, and I I tried turning it on the other day, thinking that I could put a podcast on it, and then I realized. A, I have no idea how to even put files on a device like that because it doesn't have Wi-Fi. B, how do I? It doesn't have Bluetooth. What am I going to do? Use a cable? And C, how am I ever going to know where I was and what podcast I was listening to when I get back to my real phone? <sighs> Man, yep, connectivity. They are old-fashioned devices at this point. Yeah. Um, I have my iPod Shuffle as well. I haven't really used that much either, but. Sophomore year, for some reason, I would carry that around with me sometimes and just use that because then I wouldn't have to kill my phone battery. Yeah, audio takes a, more than more power than you think. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So, yeah. So, do you want to talk about so, something a little bit more uh, uh, spacey? Yeah, a little larger, larger picture. Larger uh, a different kind of space gray. <laughs> yeah. So, um, last couple of days, the New Horizons spacecraft has been hurtling towards Pluto and did its flyby, collected uh, I think uh, 40 gigabytes of data uh, the tweet yeah. that I got that from had a lowercase b so it could be gigabit but I'm assuming it's gigabyte um, yeah. recent time Brandon but, uh, one ki- yeah right <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes yeah. Um, so yeah they got a super high res photo of pretty competitive with Mike Current. Oh, this delay and Sorry. the stutter. See, they're, they're oh. cutting the fiber line right outside his house. I mean, I mean Comcast line. <laughs> it's not really fiber. No, no, no. It's just Comcast. Yes, Comcast. Exactly. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Um, Let's continue. Um, I was my code uh, is about equivalent to what the new horizons, right? You might hear a cat. I already have, and I see a tail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, off of New Horizons. So we got sweet flyby photo in color, way, way, way higher resolution than any in the past. Um, plus a bunch of close-up ones that will be slowly streamed back to Earth over the next 16 months. So that they have 40 gigabytes of data, but the bit rate is a kilobyte per second. So, you know, that's going to take a little while. But at the same time, that satellite was launched nine and a half years ago, so their camera photos can't be too ridiculous, unless they send them in RAW, which also wouldn't surprise me, in which case, it's a lot of data. I would expect them to be somewhat compressed, though, because there's no way, well, not only compressed, but also with, like, uh, you know, mandatory checksum data that, I don't know what it would do, but it would catch errors in the transmission process. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm assuming there are probably several errors that come through. Definitely. When you're going four and a half light hours away. Yeah. I mean, I, I think one of the also impressive things is just how far away it is. It's I think I, I heard three billion miles away. Yeah, it's crazy. This thing's been traveling oh, at nearly 40,000 miles per second. Or, yeah, per second. I th- yeah, got to be per second. Maybe it's per hour. I don't know. I mean. Or almost 10 years. So I, 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 it's just so hard to think about that kind of distance because you know when when we go when I go down to the campus you know like that's far, so far man that's so far, but then there are three billion miles like what what does that even mean? There was a, a comparison yeah. I saw that said um, if you if the satellite was flying over you on a football field and you fired a gun at the exact t- same time it was over your head, the satellite would be at the end of the field. Oh, we lost Brandon. Oh, man. And we're just losing people left and right today. Yeah. Maybe this should be in person one of these days. Eh. Um, 
where if you fired um, a, a gun with a bullet, the bullet would be at the 10 yard line by the time the satellite would be at the 100 or at the other end of the field. Yeah, you know, satellites go a lot faster than bullets, it turns out. <laughs> totally. Um, my friend and I were, were kind of bored a couple of days ago, and we decided to calculate, you know, some relative daily costs for for this <laughs> this this NASA project, and we we determined oh that it in its project lifetime, which was two thousand one to two thousand sixteen, it has a budget of eight hundred fifty million allocated to it. That means approximately per day, it's one hundred eighteen thousand dollars for this project. Now that isn't that much oh if you think about Gosh. it. You know, it's it's paying for all the materials, which would probably cost a fortune. And that was a lot of the up co- uh, upfront cost, and yeah. then of course, you know, monitoring cost and whatever cost for the radios near Earth, and you know, to pay people to watch it and you know remember it and care about it. Well, we also played a fun game called "How much did the Iraq War cost?" <laughs> the Iraq War cost in its eight year Ooh. and eight month uh, duration cost. Eight hundred and fifty billion dollars, which means per day the Iraq War cost two hundred and sixty nine million dollars per day. So you could have had countless missions to various things for for even one year of of the Iraq War. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it it is just such a uh, uh, an amazing thing that we don't uh, take our space here a little bit more seriously. Uh, and you know it's kind of funny. Uh, this this goes back to our, our our wonderful show here on this network called the Universe, and one of its early episodes called "How much would you pay for the Universe?" <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing some math here, and if the, the satellite's been going three billion if three billion miles nine and a half years, yep. that averages thirty six thousand forty nine miles per hour. Oh, that's that's pretty fast. Gosh. Now if I divide that. By in the seconds, give me give me a minute here. Divide the hour by sixty, and then by sixty. That's ten miles per second. Well, um, wait. We have I a long we have a long right way to go until um, light speed is possible. Speechless. I mean, it, it it's basically the same either way, right? Yeah, he he's in awe. At ten miles per second. <sighs> I mean, that is pretty oh, yes. fast. That's fine, but like, you can't really process that because there's nothing you know that goes out. No, not really. It would be really quite quick. Very I quick. A, I can, like, to the refrigerator. <laughs> 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 I'm not even sure where we're going with this awesome. now. Awesome. That would be so awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we, we heard something, something, 10 second pause, refrigerator. Ten second pause. That uh, that would be so awesome. <laughs> uh, I, let me chat that to you. Oh dear. Oh well, P, he he dropped out. We lost him. Yeah. Well, um, I guess uh, we could talk about uh, where we can find you on the internet. Yeah. Well, you can find me as always on. Oh, uh, uh, I'm not following you, so I don't remember what you say every week. You can find me just about anywhere, but especially on Twitter at bman 409 or at tech 409 You can also follow me on Google Plus at bman 409 or at my website, brianm.me. Oh, oh, Brian is, is saying what he was uh, typing to us, what he was saying. He said, at 10 miles per second, I could beat the U... In the time it takes me to walk to the refrigerator. Oh, that is not what I would have ever imagined he said. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter and Ryan Amar, and of course, on the Google Plus, where I post pictures throughout the week of weird, random, rogue updates applied to my Nexus 6. It's quite peculiar, because I was on the latest version, and then I got a further latest version. And, of course, you can find Brandon Johnson just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Brandon underscore MN. And, of course, at JohnsonMN dot, um, what is it, dot, dot org? Dot org. But he does, uh, what does he do now? It's VR, uh, let me find it, VRDN dot, no, that's oh, not. Yeah, that's a hard one because there's no vowels. Because I can't. VR- N-D-N dot X-Y-Z. That's his main website. See, I, I can say some things really fast, but that is not one of them. I only, I only found it because it was in my browser history. Nice. 
Well, it's been a good show, except for our weird glitches. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope you uh, will come back again. Have a good one. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Podkit. For more, listen to The Fringe and listen to the next episode, too.